All right. In this video, um, we are going to practice finding the rational, uh, well, finding all the zeros of functions such as these. Now, it says uh, to list the possibles, um, but these are going to be extra easy because the leading coefficient is 1. Um, now, I could use my calculator and look for some zeros and do some synthetic division. Um, can anybody tell me why I'm not going to do that for these problems? Ms. Swift? Uh, this is where you use the rational equation? Well, yeah, we can definitely do that because it does say um, state the possibles as well as finding the actual zero. So we should get that out of the way first. So if I want to state the possibles, um, normally I would get my, uh, my numerators come from this 4. My denominators come from this 1. Um, but with a denominator of 1, that's not really going to change anything. I won't have any fractions. So really, I can, just, I can just look at the 4 only when the leading coefficient is 1. So my possibles, I'll just write up here. My possible rational zeros are just going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. That's it. Okay, those are my possible rational zeros. Okay, um, but so now to find the actual zeros, I could um, use my calculator and find some, or I could um, use some of these possibles and synthetic, but I don't have to do any synthetic division at all. Um, why? How can I factor this? Is grouping. Grouping. All right. This, these uh, first two problems here are perfect for grouping. Okay, I can tell that because look, look at the uh, pattern. One negative four, one negative four. These are just playing the same. So I'm definitely going to do grouping on on these first two problems. Okay. Um, so grouping goes like this. I look at the first pair and I look at the second pair. Um, the common factor of the first pair is x squared. So if I pull out that x squared, then that's going to leave behind x minus 4. Now I'm hoping to have an x minus 4 for, from the other pair as well. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. What am I going to put out in front? Just a 1. OK, just a 1. So if I pull out the uh, parentheses, the x minus 4 itself is now a common factor, which I need to pull out. So I pull out the common factor of x minus 4. What does that leave behind? x squared plus 1. That leaves behind x squared plus 1. All right, this should be the same thing you got if you used your calculator. So if you were using your calculator, you would have found a 0 of 4, and you would have done synthetic division, and you should have wound up with x squared plus 1 anyway. Um, one question, x squared plus 1, is this factorable, yes or no, class? No. No. no, this is not factorable. At a glance, how do you know this is not factorable? It's a plus. It's a plus, right? You can't factor the sum of two squares, only the difference of two squares. Okay, um, so we're supposed to find the actual zero, so um, I'm going to do that thing that we always do where I write down my, um, my factors and my zeros. So my factors are going to be x minus 4 and x squared plus 1. All right, That can't factor any further, so that's what I put. And then my zeros will be uh, positive 4. How do I get the zeros from the remaining factor? Equal squared. Set it equal to 0. Okay. So if I set this x squared plus 1 equal to 0, subtracting 1 from both sides gives me x squared equals negative 1. If I take the square root of both sides, hmm, all right, don't forget your what? Plus or minus. Anytime you take the square root of both sides, it's going to have to be plus or minus. Ari. Um, so when I have a negative underneath the radical, what happens? I'm going to have i. Okay, so I have plus or minus i. Um, on our last quiz, some of you wanted to put i radical 1. You want to have a radical 1 hanging around. Do we need that radical 1? No. 
No, the square root of 1 is just 1, and you wouldn't write a 1 next to something, okay? So please don't leave, nobody leave radical 1 in the answer. So my zeros are plus or minus i, okay? And you can either write plus or minus i, I would accept that, or you can write it out separately as i and negative i. All right, every time you do a problem, I want you to think about the fundamental theorem of algebra, which tells you if you look at the degree, the degree is three, so we're expecting to have three zeros. So always, always look at that. That way, if you're missing something, you might catch it if you realize, oh, I'm supposed to have three zeros, and say if you forgot the plus or minus, and you just put i, then you might realize, oh, I need that third one. It must be a negative i. So for the zeros, is it still okay to write the plus or minus? Sure, you can leave it as plus or minus i for the zeros. Okay, so that would be your final answer right there. Yes? Since it, are, since it only asks to find the zeros, do we have to put the factors as the answer? No, if, if, since I didn't specifically ask for the factors, you know, if I worded it exactly this way on the test, and if you just gave me the, the 4 and the i and the negative i, that would be perfectly fine. OK. Oh, but actually, looking at these directions, it does say factor. It does say factor. So the way this was worded, we really did need to have the factors and the zeros. But if it wasn't worded. But if it didn't say factor anywhere then you could have just listed the zeros. All right, looking at number two. Um, at a glance, the way you can tell if grouping will work is um, look, at, uh, look at the pairs of coefficients. Um, see, I, uh, I have two, and then I have one. Two over one is just two. Now look at the other pair. My coefficients are 10 and 5. 10 over 5 is also 2. If you get the same number when you divide both times, um, grouping is going to work. OK, so number 2 will be the same thing. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do grouping on this pair and this pair. Uh, again, the GCF is x squared. And that's going to leave behind x plus 2. And then I'm really hoping I'm going to have an, another x plus 2 over here. Um, but that would mean I need to pull out a 5. OK? <coughs> 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is 10. So this makes sense. Um, now the parentheses. The x plus 2 is a, a GCF itself. So I need to pull out a GCF of x plus 2. That's going to leave behind x squared plus 5. All right, so um, can x squared plus 5 be factored anymore? No. So these are my factors. Um, so now I just need my zeros. So my zero here is going to be negative 2. And um, if I set x squared plus 5 equal to 0, subtracting 5 from both sides, I get x squared equals negative 5. If I take the square root of both sides, <laughs> Don't forget your plus or minus. You're going to have x is equal to plus or minus i radical 5. OK? So you could either leave it as plus or minus i radical 5, or you can write i radical 5 and negative i radical 5. 